Hello. This constitutes the first SECME coordinator meeting digital version. I will be telling you a verification code somewhere in the midst of this recording. So please pay very close attention so you can email me that verification code and that verifies that you have in fact watched this video and it will count for your attendance for coordinator meeting number one. So as always, I'd like to introduce myself. I am Norman Reamer. Um, I'm the SECME district coordinator. My colleague, Tom Selinski is my co-coordinator and the program director is Dr. Eva Swiner. Um, she basically just approves the financial aspect of it. But uh, if you do have any questions about anything, uh, please contact me. I probably have the answer. If not, I can find out for you. Our title sponsor this year is the Cox Science Center and Aquarium. We are very excited to have a partnership with Cox Science Center, and uh, there's some going to be some exciting new things coming up um, with this year's Olympiads and uh, our collaboration with the Cox Science Center. As part of that, Cox Science Center will be hosting mousetrap car workshops this year. Um, so if you'd like to learn in depth about how to build a mousetrap car, um, you can see the dates there on the uh, screen. Um, they're going to be held at two different locations, uh, either at the Cox Science Center and Aquarium or at the STEM studio in Jupiter. The cost is $30 per participant, but that does include a complete mousetrap car kit. And this is for both adults and students if you are interested in doing that. Um, you can go to our SECME website and go to the Community Happenings page and there is a link to register for that particular workshop. Also, I'd like you to save the date for the Cox Science Center and Aquarium Engineer It event that is happening on Saturday, April 15th from 8 to 4. Uh, as I said earlier, we are going to be having some collaborative uh, events that uh, link our SECME program and the Engineer It program at the Cox Science Center. So mark your calendars. Okay, so for those of you that are new to SECME, um, SECME involves competition in uh, various engineering events. So we do water bottle rockets, balsa wood bridges, essay or poem, rainbow reloaded, mousetrap car competition, generators, and a banner competition. So throughout the day at our SECME Olympiads, uh, we will have events where you will be competing in these particular events. Some of the events are judged virtually, so they're not actually represented at the Olympiad, but um, definitely would play into your total scores. For this year, the theme for SECME has not yet been released by SECME National. I will be updating the survival guide as soon as it becomes available and you can get it from there. Some dates to keep in mind. Uh, you do need to submit a school membership form and that's due on October 7th. Um, it's a Friday, October 7th. So please uh, have your principal sign that, scan it, and upload it to the PBC SECME website. Um, that's right on the front page. You'll see the link to go ahead and submit that. Um, principals should have received that bulletin uh, the week of April 22nd, I believe. So um, they are aware of it. So if they, if they are not, you can still get a, a fresh copy from the SECME, our SECME website, and um, you sign it and they sign it. So. Just to clarify, the school membership form is acknowledgement by you, the coordinator, and your principal that you will be uh, completing all of the items that are listed on that school membership form in order to receive the SECME stipend. So make sure that uh, you, know, you are actually interested in doing SECME and that you're going to follow through on all of those things. Uh, you can check the required events calendar that's on our SECME website. 
for all of the pertinent dates. Uh, one of the things that I always like to let coordinators know is uh, the way I used to do it is I would just print this and then have it on the wall right next to my computer monitor so that I could at a glance see what's coming up with SECME because the dates do sneak up on you sometimes. And, uh, you know, we do have to have deadlines in place. So make sure that you're aware of what those dates are. Speaking of dates, uh, something else that you'll need to submit is the school implementation plan. Basically, it's a plan where you're telling me about your SECME program. So you'll be submitting that via Google Forms by December 9th. Um, and the link can be found on our website under the Club Starters and Resources tab. You will need to know some demographic information about your school. So uh, kind of take a look at that first in the survival guide, and that way you know exactly what it's going to be asking you. And then you can sit down with the Google form, fill everything out, and hit submit, and you're good to go. So talking about the responsibilities of a SECME school coordinator, um, I'm not necessarily going to read each one of these, but um, I do want to hit on a couple of these things. So of course, you're going to be making a SECME club and uh, participating in all the SECME activities. Um, by doing those SECME activities, you will be preparing students for the various um, standardized assessments, FSA and EOCs and so on. Um, you should try and see if you could get some guest speakers or role models to work with your students. Um, these could be um, you know, former students that were possibly in SECME. Um, this could be uh, people in the community that are uh, engineers now, and they could talk about engineering in the real world and so forth. But anything that uh, you can get that's, that's not you, basically, just to add to the, the, the richness of um, their experience within SECME. Um, you should provide opportunities for them to learn about science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. Um, a lot of kids aren't exposed to this stuff, and they have no idea what's available out there in a STEM field. And so um, it's important for you to expose them to that, whether it's by, uh, by example, by your guest speakers, or um, talking about uh, various opportunities that are out there and various careers in science as you're going over your actual curriculum. You can mention, oh, by the way, this particular uh, field of study involves, you know, this science or this technology or this uh, engineering and so forth. And, um, you know, to get them interested in doing that kind of thing. Some more responsibilities of the SECME school coordinator is you should provide opportunities for parental involvement. It's always helpful to get as many adults involved as possible, especially if you're working in the elementary level, um, letting, you know, kids in elementary work with razor knives and, and other sharp objects and glue and all kinds of stuff as you're completing your SECME project builds, uh, it's helpful to have an extra adult there that's going to help you. You definitely want to market your, your school's SECME program so that uh, you can grow the program and people are excited about it and uh, uh, know about it so that you know, you'll want to keep your, your membership up. Um, it's recommended that you hold SECME competitions of some sort at your school. So it's uh, recommended that you hold these competitions basically to determine which projects you're going to be bringing to the SECME Olympiad. So you might have three or four mousetrap cars that your teams are going to build, and then the one that's best is the one that represents your school at the Olympiad after you, you tweak it and uh, you know, verify that it's, that it's follows all the rules and so forth. Um, but it, again, gets kids excited about doing things um, to represent your school and to have a good showing at the Olympiad. Um, again, coordinate opportunities for uh, the student participation in non-SECME things. So this, again, is what I was talking about with the Engineer It event on April 15th. So please make sure uh, they're aware of that and uh, there's some uh, buy-in with that so that your students can attend. Attend regular uh, SECME meetings. So there are actually four meetings, but really three. So this one would count as your first SECME coordinator meeting. The next meeting is on, uh, I believe it's November 10th, and that is uh, going to be virtual. So the link is already on the required events calendar. Your third meeting is when you are actually turning in all of your paperwork digitally to me. Um, so you, there's no actual 
virtual or live meeting where you have to go somewhere, uh, but you are uploading all of your paperwork. And as long as all that paperwork is uploaded at that time, that counts for your third meeting and you're, you're good to go with that. And then our fourth meeting is uh, in late April, basically as a uh, summary of the year and going over things, looking ahead for next year and so on. So you are required as a SECME coordinator to attend all four meetings. Um, you should also be working to prepare your SECME students for the District Olympiad, and that includes the, the project builds, and it also includes getting them transportation to and from the Olympiad. So whether or not you're working with parents um, that are going to drive their individual students there or um, you know, that can carpool with, with multiple students and so forth, um, <clears throat> it's important that you arrange that well in advance and make sure you have all your paperwork in line uh, with regard to field trip forms and so forth. And yes, you will need all of that stuff, even though it's on a Saturday, um, but you need to have all of that paperwork in place. So make sure you, you cover yourself um, and you know, protect yourself, make sure all that paperwork is in order. Um, you're also responsible for submitting all the appropriate forms. That's uh, basically to SECME National. That's your um, online registration. You're registering your program with SECME National. You're going to be report, uh, sending in an end of the year report. That's not till uh, April. And then student surveys also not till April. So that goes to the SECME office. To me here at the district office, um, you're going to be submitting various forms. So like the school membership form that's due on October, um, the implementation plan that's due in December, um, and there's a few other things that, that you'll have to turn in as well uh, with uh, regard to all of your projects, and that's um, later in second semester. Um, for high school coordinators, definitely you want to share uh, information about scholarship opportunities for SECME students. Uh, Florida Atlantic University actually has a very good um, engineering um, scholarship that they offer every year for a, uh, I believe it's a four-year renewable scholarship to study with the um, College of Engineering at FAU. So that's very, um, a, a really good deal with that. Um, there are other universities that also do offer a SECME scholarship, but they're a little bit less. So please look into that. And there's some more information on that in our survival guide. <clears throat> and then portfolios, um, if you wish, but I never did that with my students. So, you know, that's not required. All right, for this year, the uh, Olympiads, for the elementary Olympiad is going to be on Saturday, February 25th at Santa Lucia's from eight to, three third, eight to three, actually. And the award celebration is the following Wednesday on March 1st, and that's gonna be at 2.30 p.m. That's gonna be a virtual celebration. For the secondary Olympiad, that's gonna be on March 11th at Santa Lucia's, eight to three. And the award celebration the following Wednesday, March 15th, at 3 p.m. Um, also going to be virtual. So um, for those of you that have done SECME before, you might realize that the Olympiads are a little bit earlier this year than they have been in the past. And that's <clears throat> essentially due to um, the uh, time when spring break occurs. And I was trying to work around that and make sure that everything was in place before that and it wasn't interrupted by it and so on. So that's why they are when they are. All right, for um, the required events, there are four uh, required events that you need in order to uh, be eligible to earn your stipend. So at the elementary level, of course, they are mousetrap car, one of the following essay or poem, the water bottle rocket, that includes the patch design, and the banner. For secondary, mousetrap car with technical report and drawings, <coughs> excuse me, the essay, there is no poem option for secondary. The water bottle rocket with the technical report and technical drawing and banner, those are the required minimum events. So it's recommended, again, if you are a brand new coordinator, these are the ones you want to focus on. Don't try and do everything the first year out. Focus on these ones and then go for the optional stuff as you gain more experience. If you are an experienced coordinator, uh, you can participate in some of the other optional events. So at the elementary level, we have the generator, balsa wood bridge, and brain bowl. And at secondary level, we also have generator, balsa wood bridge, and brain bowl, but yours includes a technical report and technical drawing. So you can see uh, in red there at the bottom, 
should you fail to participate in any required event, you'll be unable to place in the overall category. Um, and if you don't submit all of the criteria for any particular event, that could also jeopardize your uh, placing in that event and may in fact uh, jeopardize your stipend. All right, the uh, verification code is 9048. So new this year, you may enter two teams for the following events, mousetrap car, bridges, and generators. So the last couple of years, especially with COVID, we moved it down to one team only per school, but um, overwhelmingly coordinators wanted uh, the opportunity to have more kids involved in this. So two teams can participate in these events, two teams per school per event. You don't have to have two teams. You can have only one if you wish, but you can have up to two. In collaboration with the Cox Science Center, we are going to have a rocket launch invitational at the Cox Science Center Aquarium during their engineer event. Basically, the top three teams from elementary, middle, and high school will be invited to rebuild their rockets and then launch them again at the invitational uh, for some uh, really nice prizes from the Cox Science Center. We're also going to have a banner invitational during the engineer event. Um, the top three banners from elementary, middle, and high would be invited to display their banners at the Cox Science Center again for some really nice prizes. And finally, a poetry invitational at the Cox Science Center, um, where the top three poems from elementary would have an opportunity to read your poems to the audience there at uh, Engineer It. So again, for some nice prizes from the Cox Science Center. All right, so how will the competition work this year? Basically, um, as in years past, we are trying to go almost all digital. That makes uh, the process of turning stuff in and um, distributing it out to the judges much easier. So the essay or poem, depending on which one you do, you're going to be submitting that um, electronically via Google Drive. Uh, you're basically going to upload it to a, uh, a link that I will provide for you when the time comes. And uh, you'll upload a link to your essay and, and following all of the, the protocols that I'll set forth. Um, Again, elementary, you can choose either the poem or the essay, but if you do the essay, make sure your vision board uh, is included based on this year's theme. And secondary, you are required to do the essay with the vision board. Rainbow, again, is going to be uh, virtual. Uh, so the week prior to your Olympiad, we would have the sudden elimination rounds where it basically um, schools will participate and will... Uh, uh, carve down the number of schools that are participating to a smaller manageable group and <coughs> we'll send the uh, finalists from that to compete in the actual Olympiad on uh, that following Saturday. For mousetrap cars, uh, again, you can submit one or two teams per school, follow all of the survival guide rules, and um, you know each team will be able to run their car twice and spectators and coordinators stay in the bleachers while the kids do all of the uh, running of their cars and so on. And when after the, the they run their cars twice, we take the, the best run from each car for scoring purposes. Generators, again, uh, one or two teams. Um, it's going to be visually inspected at check-in and the highest generator output measured and used for scoring. And that's basically run by FPNL. They do a really good job with uh, partnering with us at SECME and uh, running that program for the generators. Water bottle rockets, again, one or two teams per school. Um, the rocket will be inspected at check-in. And what we're looking for is a maximum hang time as measured by three different timers. And then we average the time. And that's what's used for scoring. And banners, um, you're only submitting one banner per school. And this isn't really a team project. This is your entire SECME project. So everyone has an opportunity to work on your banner. Um, you're going to be submitting a clear digital photo of the banner, and that's going to be forwarded to the judges for, for judging. Um, what I do ask is that teams bring your banner with you to your Olympiad. We're going to have a banner 
parade at the end of our uh, Olympiad. So make sure you have that there and everyone can participate in the uh, banner parade. We are also bringing back our on-site build. Um, I don't know what that is yet, but um, that's going to be something that happens the day of the Olympiad. Um, it's going to be one team per school. That's a, a team is considered three students. And the winning team is going to be announced that day, and there's going to be a trophy awarded and so forth. So it's basically just the first place winner, and you know, here you go, you, you did it on-site build. Um, and that's going to be at the end of the day uh, during the SECME Olympiad. All right, uh, something else new this year is I updated the bridge, cr bridge crusher again. Um, we had some problems at the secondary Olympiad last year where the bridge crusher broke. Um, and had to be repaired. So you can see in this picture there, the uh, brand new red bar there, it's a solid steel, actually, uh, it's a hollow steel uh, bar, but um, it's, it's much stronger than it was last year. So the only difference now is that this thing is going to be pressing down on your bridge with a total area of 12 square inches. So that is a 12 inch long bar, it's one inch uh, wide. So there's your 12 square inches. Um, and that is how we calculate the total load is gauge pressure times the 12 square inches. Um, there are no other changes to the rules for bridges. So everything is still the same as it was last year. All right, some advice for new coordinators. If you are brand new, um, these were compiled basically by uh, experienced coordinators over the years. So as I said earlier, you should focus on the minimum required events. If this is your first year in SECME, don't try and do everything because you're going to get overwhelmed. So stay with the minimum required events and uh, see how everything works out and what you need to do and, and how everything flows in your club and so forth. So that way, um, you know, as you gain more experience, you can be like, okay, yeah, I can take on uh, the generator this year or the bridge or whatever. Definitely involve other adults wherever you can. So this can be uh, parent volunteers. This can be other teachers that work in your school um, or uh, you know, any, anybody else that might be interested in doing that. Um, if you're at the elementary level, maybe you have a, uh, a trusted high school person that could come in that's experienced in engineering or in SECME um, that can help you with that. Um, anything where you have a little bit more uh, eyes on the kids and help in during your meetings when you're building stuff uh, is you're going to find very helpful. Try and meet at least once per week. Uh, generally, there's not much that happens during the first semester um, because it's more administrative. You're, you're handing in paperwork and that kind of thing, but um, definitely get the kids building, get them working on this stuff so that they're used to meeting at SECME every you know Wednesday or whatever you have it. And that way um, there's, you know, you, you don't, skip a beat once second semester comes around and the Olympiads are right around the corner, the kids are already uh, working on their stuff and they know what they need to do. Um, if you need fundraising, please talk to your administration first uh, with regard to what your fundraising opportunities are, or if there's even money available already that they can just give you so you can buy supplies if you need them and so forth. Definitely chunk the boring work. Um, you know, there is some writing involved, whether you're doing the essay or the technical reports, and that's not something that you want to just give them all at once because uh, that would be probably boring for them unless they're, you know, a really good writer or something. But, you know, do it a little bit at a time so that way it doesn't seem like it's all at once. Um, use school-based competitions, as I mentioned earlier, so that determines who your best teams are that are going to uh, go forward with their projects to the Olympiad. Um, and it, again, builds excitement at your school. If, if you know, you're uh, racing mousetrap cars after school down the hallway, um, other students are going to notice that. And they're going to be like, hey, what's that? That's sec me. Oh, you know, I want to join that club. And they'll be excited about it. So definitely do that. And that gives you visibility and it helps market your, your club there and everything. Read the survival guide and also read the emails that I send out. Please, please, please. Um, everything that you need to know about running SECME is in the survival guide. Um, and then, of course, I send out multiple reminder emails uh, regarding you know, due dates and, and things you need to turn in, things you need to do, and that sort of thing. But please read all of the information there. Uh, you 
know, I, I promise you that I, I will not mislead you and, you know, send you too much or, or uh, you know, send you superfluous uh, emails, but please read what I do provide. Um, definitely make use of school breaks. Keep an eye on the calendar. Um, you know, winter break and Thanksgiving break are a great time for the kids to write because then they're not in school. They're not, uh, you know, preoccupied with anything else. Maybe they can, you know, whip out that, that essay for you and that sort of thing. <clears throat> Don't ever turn students away if you think that, you know, your, your, your club is too big already. Um, every student has a nice role to play somewhere in SECME. So not only do you need, you know, people that can build mousetrap cars and they're, you know, very uh, engineering minded or math minded, um, but you need those artists, you need those writers, you need those managers, uh, you know, people that can help you with paperwork and so forth. So, you know, everybody's uh, role is important in the club. And definitely ask questions. Um, I'm only an email away, so please, uh, you know, if you don't know where to turn or whatever, uh, email me first and I can either answer the question myself or I can direct you to somebody that can help you uh, with, with what you need to know. All right. As always, if you have any questions or concerns about SECME, please contact me. Um, I'm always here. Uh, definitely by email, and uh, I would be more than happy to uh, discuss your concerns. Thank you, and take care.